Hello and welcome to the video. This video I'm going to talk about how I've put my TBS Kaipaina 2 wing together with the flight controller and everything else. Now the build itself has been an awful lot of fun and the way that the Kaipaina 2 is laid out means that you have to put a little bit of thought into it. And in the recent video I talked about iNav building best practice, where I talked about what you should have close to what, what you should have further away, considerations, what you need to do. And at the end of that, I did show my idea for putting this wing together and installing all the electronic components. Now, as I show you a couple of the internal pieces in here of how it's gone together, you'll notice that I ended up changing the flight controller. And that's because although I thought that the Matek F405 wing flight controller that I did a review on a little while ago was going to be too big for this, and it is if you put the pins on that come as part of the kit, it will fit in if you are super careful with your cable routing, you'll have about six millimeters in front and behind the board, and you won't be able to use any pins because you don't have the height in there to plug in servo connections. But if you're happy to wreck soldering onto the board, then it'll work a treat. Originally, the plan was to use an F4 Omnibus flight controller. Uh, this is the version 2.1 and the reason I wanted to use this is it has an onboard current sensor and voltage sensing too. So I could run the power from the XT60 at the back of the battery compartment into the flight controller and then back out into the ESC. And that would allow me on the on-screen display to keep an eye on battery status and those pieces too and to make sure that I had return to home happening well in advance of me running out of battery. But there was a couple of reasons why I ended up not using this flight controller, even though this is exactly the build that I bought this thing for. But what it means is that I need a UART for the GPS, I'm gonna need a UART for FR Sky Telemetry, I'm gonna potentially need a UART for the camera control for the run cam I want to use, I'm gonna need a UART for the smart audio to configure the video transmitter, and I also potentially need a spare one if I wanna pop in something like a Bluetooth transceiver in here as well, so that I can upload, download information from the wing wirelessly without having to pop covers off and plug in USB cables. You simply can't do that with just three UARTs. And in a wing like this, where everything's hidden away, I decided that, you know what, I'll just bite the bullet and put the Matic in. First thing I did was spend a little bit of time trying to figure out how all the routing and cabling in this wing work. Again, as I talked about, there are two kind of equipment bays that have clickable latches on the top, and then there are bays underneath its wing, one for the video transmitter on one side and the other for the radio receiver. The cameras go at the front and all of that has to be connected. The challenge is I don't want to run lots of signal cables right from one bay to the other near all of the high power electronics at the back of the model where the ESC is going to be. And although it's probably overkill, I decided that what I would do is get my hands on a multi-strand cable that had some kind of shield and use these strands to take the signals and the power from one bay into the other and have it done in a way that hopefully the signals would have the best chance of not being interfered with from other RF and electrical noise sources on the model. So the other thing I did was start to look at how I could do all this without having lots of wires soldered to other wires because soldering connections can eventually give up and snap. So the least number of connections in the model itself is great. So I took the GPS sensor out of the plastic puck that it comes in and on the back there is all beautifully labelled up. That's going to make it easy to put together. But it was on a cable. So I removed the cable to try and figure out a way that I could get the soldering done and wonderfully, by the side of that connector, there's the soldering pads onto the GPS unit so I can solder everything directly. So now I've got an idea how everything's gonna fit. I spent an awful lot of time actually figuring out how all of these pieces were going to be connected together. The manual for the Matek F405 wing is very basic. It has a really good connection diagram and also shows you how to configure the ports in INAV Flight. And again, if you're not sure about INAV Flight or how to set it up, the actual configuration of the software outside of the couple of things shown in the very limited manual from Matek for this flight controller are all covered in the INAV series and I'll put a link in the description. 
But if I just talk you through what I did, I sat down with a little diagram and I figured out how I wanted everything to be connected. So where the OLED screen that I wanted was going to be, how the GPS was going to connect, what pins I'd need for the receiver. Also then where the camera was going to plug in, the video transmitter, how the video transmitter, the smart audio connection was going to fit onto the flight controller where the servos were going to fit in and where I put a buzzer on as well. In reality, I haven't put the buzzer on. That might be something that I add later. For the moment, I'm finding that I'm not really needing it. Last thing I did was once I'd figured out how all the cables went together, I did a little layout diagram that kind of gave me an idea of which cores in that that multi-core cable that I got hold of were going to be wired to everything. And I color coded this little slide that I made and I had it on the screen as I was sat in front of it with a soldering iron in one hand kind of, uh, and my tongue stuck out trying to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes. The shielded cable that I am using here is actually the kind of stuff that you use to wire up house alarms. But you can also use Cat5, Cat6 cable, those kind of cables that you use, those Ethernet cables that you use to connect up to your router or whatever. You have a spare one of those. They have lots of cores inside and they're also shielded as well. I've also grounded the shield on this cable to one of the spare ground pads on the flight controller to make sure that it's earthed as well to try and again minimize any signal interference from this slightly longer run. Now I'd figured that out. Next thing to do then was to start putting things together. So the first thing I did was install the cable, left myself with an awful lot of wires at each end so I could trim them back and I made sure that I had lots and lots and lots. So the GPS was going to go in this side. I used a little bit of heat shrink at the end of the cable just to tidy it up really. On the other side, this is what all the cables look like when they're in place. There's the other end of that multi-core cable, the two connections from the servos, the power leads in and out and the ESE connection as well. Worthwhile me talking about what I did with a power connection. So on that, what I did was I took out the ESE and power distribution board from the back of the wing. That just comes out with four screws and you just unplug the wires, it's all bullet pointed. And then I removed the heat shrink from the ESC and over the top of the connectors on the power distribution board. And then once I'd done that, I soldered on two new lengths of cable using the same cable sizes and then put heat shrink back over the ESC and over the XT60 connector and fed them all back into the position inside the wing. Once that's done, we can actually start making the ends off. And you can see here it is a little bit tight, so you do have to avoid using any of the pins. I have pre-soldered all of the spots on the flight controller that I'm going to use. Two reasons for doing that. One, it's going to make the soldering a little bit faster, but also I know that I finished soldering everything up and it's going to the right spot, so I don't accidentally end up soldering something to the wrong pin and then getting stuck later on. So the first jobs then are to start making off the cables from the multi-core that's going to the other bay. And there they are all soldered up. And that bare wire that's in the bottom left-hand corner is the one that I'm going to actually cover in heat shrink. And is going to be the one that grounds the shield that's inside the cable. Again, that's probably overkill. Speaking to Constantine, the father of INR flight, he thinks that probably is overkill, although it's something he used to do but I just couldn't help it. It's kind of in the cable, so I might as well make the end off. Once all those connections are made for the GPS and the receiver on the other side, then it is the other side splitting the cables. One set of four going into the bay that's going to go on the receiver for uh, the power ground SBUS and the smart port telemetry as well. And the other four cables are there for the ground plus five volts and then the transmit and receive bits that need to happen. So again, soldered some little nice blobs of solder onto the pads that I'm going to use on the back of the GPS and soldered the wires into place. The disappointing thing about the wire that I'm using here is it's actually, I think, plastic insulation. So it does melt if you keep the soldering iron in place too long. If I did this again, I'd probably spend a bit more time trying to source the cable, trying to get a cable that has silicon insulation. Once all those ends were made off, double checked I had done it the right way around, that the transmit pin on the GPS goes to receive pin on the UART on the flight controller. And then once that was done, snap the top on, put a bit of double-sided foam, pops it in the bay. 
Next thing to do was to wire in the signals for both the servos and also for the throttle connection coming out the back. So that's what those three wires are there for. Unfortunately, the wire from the other wing for that servo wouldn't go all the way round. If I was using a smaller flight controller, it would have. So I took the decision to run it over the top of the flight controller. And so far with the flying, I haven't had an issue with vibration. It's kind of worked really well. Next thing to do then is make off the power. Uh, this was really tricky with the limited amount of space that I had in here because of the size of the flight controller. But the first thing to do was double check that I actually had the two power cables from the power distribution board where the XT60 is, cut them to length, some nice pre-tinning, heavy use of tweezers here to get them sat in the right place and make them off one after the other. When all that's done, it looks like that. So that is the signals, the GPS, the receiver made off on the flight controller and the power bits done as well. So putting the top of the flight controller on, just see what it's gonna look like it is starting to look like a very neat build. Next thing to do then is install the VTX and the camera. So the camera just pushes home into position into the nose of the wing and feed the cable through so it pops through into the bay. Also used another four cables going out into the video transmitter bay and you can see them both there on top of the flight controller. Again, just going to make those off and you can see the blue cable there at the bottom going to TX3. That's going to be the transmit pinout for UART3, and that's the one we're going to use for smart audio. Unfortunately, the way that the video transmitter works, I am going to have to cut the cables off and make the ends off one side to the other. But once that was all done, it nestled beautifully in place. I've cut a couple of holes in the cover just for ventilation. And then the other side, exactly the same thing, doing the radio receiver just making absolutely sure, double checking with those diagrams that I've already done, that I'm not messing anything up and soldering something the wrong way around, using heat shrink to keep everything safe, and a little bit more wire than I needed in case I need to change anything later on. Now also having the four cables running out into this bay does mean that if I decide later on to swap this out for a little micro receiver for the TBS Crossfire system, then I have the two power wires and a transmit and receive wire for the CRSF protocol. Again, another reason why you need another spare UART on your flight controller. Last thing to do then was to add the OLED. Uh, the OLED works a little bit weirdly, uh, but there are reported problems on F4 flight controllers. I just like to have some kind of indication that there's a GPS lock and that the flight controller has armed successfully as well if I'm not looking in my goggles and I'm just looking at the wing sat on the ground. This is an I squared C device. Uh, it's a slightly bigger one than I normally use. Depinned it and then soldered it in place and then it fits beautifully just in front of the motor. There may be a little bit of interference in the I squared C connection. If there is, I might move this to another spot on the wing. But for me, for the test flying, it's just handy to check that everything's okay. So that's how it's all gone together. Hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are going to do something similar and the images and the wiring diagrams would help you put something like a TBS wing together. This isn't the only way to do it. There are lots and lots of different options. I originally was going to copy what the lead developer from iNav had done with his TBS wing, which was to use the same F4 omnibus board that I bought but for those of you that have this wing, maybe looking for flight controller, I think the Maytech F405 wing, if you can cope with the limited space and soldering directly onto the board, is a really nice option, particularly with the number of UARTs, because with this, I'm able to potentially control the camera directly, I can control the video transmitter, I can send my telemetry back, I can have my OLED screen, I can even have my GPS and also something like a Bluetooth module all attached in here and still have a port or two to spare. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.